And welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Eric. What is good? Everything is good. No, you are wrong. It's okay, but you are wrong. We also have Tom, (laughs) who is uh, not as overly optimistic as I was a second ago. I mean... It's it's hard to be right because like we've got yeah. invading forces here. There's two armies clashing. We're all caught in the middle here in White Run, and I honestly <laughs> don't know what to do. I'm just sitting here <laughs> waiting for like some kind of mythical hero or something to rescue us from this fucking waking nightmare. Uh, and it's just a general hellscape. Quite literally, the dragons are back. That's and it. Fuck the whole place. I'm moving. I'm going back to Morrowind. I came here for a better life, and, and Skyrim's over, man. Like, it's just done. I'm moving to Morrowind. But, Fuck Tom, you're the Dragonborn. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, yeet! Holy shit. <laughs> What'd you just break? What was that? <laughs> that was that was my, my dragon shout, which, by the way, is yeah, yeet. <laughs> the, the dragon is, is a zoomer. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> uh, so how's everyone's week's been? Uh, that no, was not as, your week not as bad, bad as Tom week. sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, It's been interesting times. I'm going to leave it there. Okay. We can leave it right there. Times. It is interesting. Yeah. It's actually been pretty good for me. I've enjoyed yep. the week. It's been a good week. You went fishing today. Yes. Oh. Got caught in some uh, fun weather. But yeah, went fishing today. Went fishing through the week and played games. So it was a good week. Hey. Nice. And Doesn't work wasn't like awful. Week. That's always a big plus. I actually yes. had a really great week at work. I got a whole shit ton done. Um, like we... We hired new people on the team. We're just getting to the point, like, right after everybody gets used to starting up and, like, getting going, we're starting to make real progress on stuff. And it was really nice. Work was Where they're actually killer used, this week. When yeah, the employees yeah. are actually useful and not, you know, taking your time up for stupid shit. <laughs> exactly. Like, and that's, I, I wouldn't ever fact. put it that harsh, but it's actually No, 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 no. Right? Like, when starting yes. any job, you're going to be useless for the first month, basically. Yeah. And it's funny because where we work, they try to say like, oh, you'll be making progress and helping in two days. No, no, dog. no. <laughs> no. you'll be making coffee in two days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I, I never use those type of coffee makers. I was the guy that if it felt like it was low, I just wouldn't get coffee. So I wouldn't have to make new. So I didn't know how to use the coffee. You didn't want to be that guy that didn't make it right. And everybody's like, oh, I, I who made the coffee, that. idiot? Oh, no, no, because it's it's like I can respect like being the guy that avoids getting the cup because you don't know how to work the coffee maker to make a fresh pot versus being the guy that's like, oh, I don't know how to make it. So I'm going to take the last cup and now it's somebody else's problem. There's no worse feeling in an office than hitting that pump and getting the (laughs) just exactly just no fucking coffee like you motherfucker. (laughs) We had a we had a sign underneath our um co- or right beside our coffee makers that had a flow chart and it was on the lines of did you take the last cup of coffee and then it was did you refill it and it just or did you make a new and it just showed a check mark and then it said did you not and then it showed someone getting fed to a tiger <laughs> <laughs> yes agreed there is no no better punishment carl bass by the way we need more we need more of my sound effects on the show i've realized more of your sound effects yeah. Of you throwing like the- stuff in the house? <laughs> yeah, throwing stuff, empty coffee pot. <laughs> but that's the Jeez. best thing about working from home. The coffee's always there when you expect it. Yeah. Cheers. That's true. As I drink and- from my uh, my glorious Jake from State Farm coffee mug. Hey, nice mug. Nice. I have one of those. I never did get it, and I'm sad because I really, really liked it. It's a good mug. I yeah. like that logo. That was a really good logo. Agreed. 
So uh, I've been really enjoying my desk space because I made a very small change. You ever make like a really small change to like your setup in something, not necessarily just your desk, but just in whatever. And it's like the smallest little thing, but it just makes everything way better for no reason. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. I literally, I'm not going to describe my, my whole setup, but I basically have this thing and it's the volume knob for my speakers that are in front of me. And I've always had it over here to the left. Um, but I moved it right here in the middle because I could run the cables through my desk because it's got like this hole in the front where cables can go through. So I've got my volume knob thing like right in front of me, right by my keyboard. Mm -hmm. And that is such a small change. It's like two feet maybe to the right. But like I'm not reaching over my drinks to change the volume knob and risking spilling oh. stuff. And I don't know. It's just one of those things like it's the smallest little stupidest change that should be completely insignificant but it's just made every made everything better yeah That's my fake. desk is a little claustrophobic so i understand getting it to where you don't have to reach across things yeah that's a great thing yeah but yeah i i really got to do something about my desk i've been wanting to rework my setup anyway somehow my desk is just consistently a mess like even if i tear everything down and and build it back up and it's perfectly clean it'll stay that way for four days before like <laughs> i drag old electronics out and i'm like oh yeah i should probably you know fix this thing or replace these pieces or do something but like for basically a hobbyist tinkerer i've i've just come to the terms of the fact that i'm never gonna have a clean desk it's just not gonna happen you just always have like extra peripherals and all kinds of stuff yeah or is it or is it the like Six drink glasses and like a paper plate. Oh, no, it's, and never, the it's never food. refuse. It's never <laughs> refuse. But like, okay, so I've got controller, hard drive, a bunch of cables. Here's some, uh, like, uh, I'm not yeah, looking. Are you just grabbing paint. random shit off your desk? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, did you say there's thermal some paste? laptop stickers. Why do you have? Yeah, I do have thermal paste on my desk. How often How do you often use thermal you paste? Build... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's a system I have that's having heat or overheating problems, and I really need to redo the thermal paste. And I've got that system like over there, but I haven't. And so it sits here until it's done. <laughs> it's like that constant to-do list reminder. Hmm. I was going to say, I'm like, what? But I need to move my desk around. So then I also uh, air out my PC. I think I found why I'm having issues streaming. And why my shit's running like crap. Oh. Um, I looked at the top you of my burning? case and my God. That oh. makes a yeah. huge difference. Yeah, it does. Like, like the first I time I ever had a gaming PC and I didn't know to clean it out clean it out that often. And I was playing Battlefield 3 had just came out and I got it on PC. My frames were garbage and it made zero difference. If I was running on ultra graphics or if I was running on low graphics, the frame rate was always garbage. It didn't change at all. And I was like, what is going on? So I opened up the case and there's a half inch layer thick of uh, layer of dust on top of my oh, CPU man. and the heat sink and stuff. <laughs> and I cleaned all of that out and I restarted the PC and it ran like butter. It was perfect. <laughs> nice. Like butter. Straight butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well because i was streaming um i can't remember what it was but i was streaming and i was doing rocket league i've always streamed rocket league i mean yeah. it's just what we do well it was dropping frames my game was jittery as shit no clue what was happening well i saw my pc now and it makes sense it is screaming at me that i'm a filthy bastard and need to clean it <laughs> <laughs> those are two separate statements Right, but like you both... you are just a filthy bastard. By the way, you also have to clean your case. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, oh, we well, have some chat us. interactions I missed. Oh no, Skyrim is for the what? Nords. White run forever. So, uh, guys, there's been a goal, so I can now talk about the greatest hot sauce in the world. Top it to you. Oh, come on! It's beautiful. Uh, it's delicious. It's, it's a good I sauce, but top to you. it's a good sauce, but. Uh, I don't know that I've ever had it. Really? It's it's great. Secret um, Aardvark. So, but can you get Secret Aardvark Doritos? No. <laughs> but you can get Tapatio Doritos. Ooh. I gotta say, I, I really 
fucking love these. <laughs> to be I fair, you were able to get McDonald's cheeseburger Doritos. So I don't know that the bar is too high on have to be awesome <laughs> to get a Dorito flavor. But it's so good. And the best part about it is I can only eat like a few of the chips before you start in like the, the like spicy sweats. Um, <laughs> it's, it's great. You put the Tapatio on the Tapatio Doritos? Oh. Uh, you know what? I'm going to try that. Double Tapatio. I might die, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> um, I've also got now, I know I talked about this a lot last year, but I just re upped. So I, I've got to tell you guys during, during the smoke break that I took from Beat Saber, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I decided I was missing some smoke in my life, right? Like, the weather cleared up, and there was no more smoke in the air. You could actually go outside without dying, and I, I just didn't, didn't love it. So I got me some Lapsang Souchong tea. It's a quite mm. literally smoked tea. Uh, it is glorious and delicious, and I have to keep it in a Ziploc bag because it literally fills the kitchen just by the box being out. That's how smoky this tea is. It's fucking. Couldn't great. you just breathed in while drinking your tea? Uh, I could have, <laughs> yes. But now that the smoke is gone, like I don't have that option. Oh, so now you miss it. So you had to buy the tea for it. Yeah, like it's kind of like Stockholm syndrome way, uh, in a way. So you know, the the smoke went away. I could accurately or accurately, <laughs> I could effectively breathe without dying. And I just, I don't know. I needed it. So yeah. 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 Roadhouse. Roadhouse. So <laughs> let's, should, we, should we get to the meat and potatoes of the podcast? Meat and potatoes. We got, we got so, some about lapsing Suchong. Oh no, nope. Tom. We've already no, talked um, about that tea on multiple podcasts. Yeah. I know. We don't need it again. But what we haven't talked um, about in a while is Dark Souls. Damn right. Why so, did you say the, that? Uh, the Demon Souls trailer. Super excited. It looks good. That's a good. Could care less. Okay. Couldn't Actually, care less. you couldn't care less. <laughs> I corrected I it. Care he cares a little. He could care less, but not very much less. <laughs> There's a very little amount of space, but it's there. It does, in fact, exist. <laughs> hey, I got that. <laughs> so, uh, Vigi Games. Vigi, Vigi Games. Games. Did you guys play some? Smoke break from Beat Saber for three weeks. I came back and got two days in a row of straight PBs. Um, not everything was a PB, so maybe it's not straight PBs. But, hey, uh, it turns out a three-week break did really good things for my, uh, my accuracy. Like, I got number 70 on Superman in the world. Number 70. Nice. That's awesome. I am super, super fucking happy with that. Sometimes a break is all you need to kind of reset yourself and like you can practice something every day and, you know, get a little bit better at it each day. And then you take a three week break or whatever and you come back twice as good as you were when you stopped. Like, <laughs> exactly. it's, like, it's like your brain catches up to all the practice you did and like, oh, OK, yeah, we did all these things. Let's uh, let's add that to the repertoire and we're awesome now. Let's let's get back into it. That's I exactly found that how rock I feel about this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything. So the Beat Saber was good to you, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's now I have noticed because I took that three week break. Uh, my stamina is nowhere near where it should be. Um, after about an hour, I was I was dead. Whereas before I could do two hours of Beat Saber easily, consistently. And I would only have to stop because my feet would hurt from standing so long. Um, so, yeah, the, my stamina is a little lower, but my accuracy and scores have vastly improved. And I think it's uh, part of it is because like I was really relying on a lot of muscle memory for these tracks, right? Mm -hmm. I knew where to be. I knew where to swing. And I almost got lazy about looking at the notes and identifying what I should be doing, right? It, it's like uh, it's actually exactly like using power tools. There are two super dangerous times in your life to use power tools. One, when you have when you have no experience and you're freshly using them. And then the other time is when you've been using them forever and you just get into this complacency where you're not actually thinking about what you're doing. An autopilot. Um, and I, yeah, exactly. So I, I got into that with Beat Saber. So this three-week break, I'm, 
I lost the the muscle memory basically. So I had to actually look at what I was doing and and realize, oh, okay, I need to be here to hit this thing. This note is going to approach here. This pattern means this one's probably coming up next. Uh, and it's been a huge help just actively playing the game instead of just passively flailing. Breaking bad habits. Hell yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. That's good. You should try Saeed again. Uh, I did. I did. I actually have some news about Saeed, uh, but not the news you were hoping for. I oh. didn't pass it yet, but I did tie my uh, my very best run. I've only failed once during the playthrough. I, guys, it's it's a matter of months. I'm going to get it this year. I have to get it this year. It's going to be the only good thing that happens in 2020. Tom beats Saeed. Everyone celebrates. Yep. Ah. Uh. But yeah, that, it's that's gonna cool. happen. That's cool. I see you also uh, was doing a little Donkey Kong Country. I was. Uh, I actually I needed to uh, veg out, play something before bed. I didn't like want to. I wanted to play something, but I didn't want to get into anything too involved. So uh, yeah, I had the SNES classic stuff on my Switch. Fired up some DKC, ran through a couple levels, and uh, can you guys? Like, do you guys agree that Donkey Kong Country has some of the best water levels ever? Just straight up. They're good. You, okay. The fact that you can say I don't hate them automatically puts them in like the top 10%. <laughs> yeah, that's Agreed. true. Yeah. Totally agree. Water, water levels suck. So yeah, I was but playing yeah, some I... DKC and it's, it's legit. And I love that that game... Um, and and I'm not I'm not an expert by any means, but I've been literally playing this since I was a little kid. That game is hard as fucking nails. <laughs> Most of those older games are. Yeah, I mean, and it's, uh, it's uh, kind of sadistic in parts. I I love that. Uh, as Scott asked, was that the first one with the roller coaster tycoon levels? <laughs> <laughs> roller coaster levels? Yes. Those yeah, were the fun. Mine carts. I do remember those. Those were fun. Yeah. Yeah, that the minecart was... levels are great. The barrel levels were fantastic. Like the straight up platforming challenges were good too, but it's all the little stuff that really makes Donkey Kong Country what it is. The all the inter like the Rhino integration was great. Yep, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, and honestly, uh, Frozen Tropics was a really good take on it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I love Donkey Kong Country Returns. It was fantastic, and then. Um, the the frozen one the sequel to that was yeah, just frozen awesome. tropics um and it was both of those games remain hard as nails so yeah, yeah. i i was um also laying in bed i'm like eh, i don't want to do slay the spire i booted up the snes and i saw D donkey kong country and i'm like man do i want to instead <laughs> i went to um super mario all-stars and played og mario nice was good. Was doing save state, so I'm on like level seven because that is way too fucking hard. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. I I abuse the hell out of save states, mostly because like in Donkey Kong Country they had the the specific save points. Like you have to beat so many levels in a row, and I I get that from a design concept, but I don't have time for that shit. So I just save state my way through every yeah. day. You save scummer. Damn right I am. Uh, what was I gonna say? There was something else like that. But fuck it, can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> um, speaking of Mario All Stars, I see you picked it up already. Uh, 3D All Stars. I did. I've been I've been playing the hell out of that. How is um, it? I think it's gonna adequately get me through Seattle Winners. I forgot how fucking pretty Mario Sunshine was. God damn! Like just existing in those those like fantastic tropical levels are wonderful it is just chill it's bright it's peppy um mario sunshine was never one of my favorites like i always thought it was even worse than mario 64 which i kind of still agree with today um but the just the aesthetics of that game um and and the feel of the levels and the music like everything is just chipper as fuck and i love it it's it's something something i needed recently was a a game that was just unapologetically positive uh and mario sunshine yeah hits that mark so i never played it and whenever i saw that trailer i saw the world i'm like man that actually looks kind of odyssey-ish i'm like that looks really good yeah like i I, I do gotta say though i 
don't know how I feel about Galaxy in this package. And it's honestly the thing I was looking forward to the most because I don't want to have to drag my Wii out of the closet and then find a sensor bar and then batteries for the Wiimo. Like, there's, there's a significantly barrier or significant barrier to my laziness there. Um, so I fired up Odyssey or uh, Galaxy and instead of using the Wii pointer to grab like star bits and aim, they just use the gyroscope. It oh. works hmm. kind of like it, it works better than I thought it would, but it's still plenty annoying because you'll be playing you'll hit a jump. And I'm one of those guys where I'm constantly moving my controller. Right. Like when I was a kid, I would literally stand in front of the TV and jump when Mario jumped because I thought it would make him go higher. Um, and yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm moving my controller around like I'm running. I'm getting into it like shots in Rocket League. I'm doing this all the time. And in this game, that doesn't really work. So you have to like glide it around and get the star bits. And I don't know, it just doesn't work as well as the. Wiimote, which sounds really weird to say. Did you ever um, think you would want Waggle back? Yeah, I, I never did, but you know, I do now. Um, it's it's not terrible. They they did a great job with what they had, but yeah, with Nintendo games, they're generally purpose built for the controllers that they come with. Um, so playing Odyssey or playing Galaxy without a Wii remote feels a little off. Well, that's sad because that's probably while I've never played Sunshine, I was looking forward to getting back into Galaxy because that game was amazing. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. Like, like, don't don't let that put you off of the entire package because Galaxy is still fucking great. Um, it's just not not as good as I remember, which is kind of sad. That so happens. so what are what are your guys' favorite like top Mario game of all time? What's your, oh. what's your favorite one? Dude, I'm going to give the top I'm... three. All right. Number three, Mario 64. Number two, Mario World. And number one is Mario 3. All the way. No contest. Mario 3 is the best. I feel I, I don't want to be a cop out, but I feel you can't compare the 2D Marios to the 3D Marios. I think that's uh, totally you can. acceptable. Like, I, I, mean, I just... love Odyssey. Odyssey was fucking stellar. Odyssey was amazing. Um, I would put Odyssey above 64. Um, I would probably say my favorites would be 364 Odyssey. Uh, no, actually, okay. probably th I, 3 Galaxy Odyssey. I okay. just say 3 because it's my favorite of the 2Ds. Right, 3 is just fantastic. I, I loved 3. And the metagame to it was fun. Yeah. Like I liked the battling and stuff that you could do with each other and then the whole card shuffle bullshit. I uh I always liked um all the the really stupid things you could do to just cheese levels or skip them entirely. Like uh all the boat levels in the the final world where you have to go through like this hellish gauntlet of jumping up on boats and not falling into the the red lava below but it turns out it's not lava it's just red water and what i would do is you jump down and you sink low enough to not die but just to go under the ships because mario doesn't have a breath meter and you literally just swim under the entire level you would it takes a little bit <laughs> you but would. it's a good way to skip an auto scroller Jeez. yeah the auto scrolling levels were the worst of the 2ds Agreed. Uh, which, what about which, you, Adam? You've never really been too vocal as being a Mario guy. I'm not. No. Um, honestly, at this point, I haven't even played most of them ever. If, um, but I played the first three, and World. So, my favorite is probably probably a tie between three and World. Honestly. <laughs> Hold on. I, I just now caught on to something that came out in that exchange. Have you never played Mario 64? Nope. Okay. I never had a 64, so the 64 games I did play were at friends' houses briefly or at my family's houses or something. Yeah, and growing up as a kid, if you were playing multiplayer 64, it wasn't passing the controller on Mario. No, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It was fucking GoldenEye, Mario Kart, Perfect Dark, something like that. Yeah. 
So yeah, probably um, either three or world. I can't really decide. It's been so long since I've played either one. You know, I don't, I don't remember everything. I never I had an SNES, so I only my only experience to world was as an adult. Yeah, I uh, I might have played world for the first time on uh well like at friends houses but i might have owned world uh just through emulators because i was a genesis kid same genesis Gotta kid go fast. yeah it's that blast processing man you can't do without it yeah hell yeah hey, well, and so Adam. Mr. says world was fine it wasn't amongst the top three marios though all right. Well, now I'm interested in uh, in AOL Instant Messenger's top Mario games, um, and Heroic Saint calls out the best football game ever created, NFL Blitz. And yeah, I am saying it's better than Tech Mobile. I knew that would be NFL Blitz before I even saw the message in chat. <laughs> you, you started <laughs> reading the best NFL game, and I was like, "Oh, NFL Blitz." Yeah. It's it was so fucking good. It was fun. It was really fun, especially with the cheat because they it was midway, so they went off the same thing they did with NBA Jam with the uh, cheats. Yeah, so good. Actually, did all midway games have that? Like Mortal Kombat had that too. The vast At least majority Ultimate of them did. did. Ah, midway, rest in peace. Yeah, mid midway did some some good stuff. They made really poor choices later in their life, but. If you wanted like an arcadey fun game and it said Midway on the box, you were in good hands. Oh yeah, dude. So um, sixteen bit arcade in uh, Columbus, we yep. would <laughs> go there and we would play Blitz. Like you didn't have to be a sports person to enjoy Blitz or Blitz, and playing it on a cabinet so much better. Oh, agreed, one hundred percent agreed. That's the first time I played Blitz was out of Dave and Buster's. Really? Yeah, and oh, then wow. I went bought it i had a uh i had it on the dreamcast uh so i got yeah like, me, me too high resolution textures dreamcast uh i love the dreamcast i don't care i really miss sega sega and I, like they had a lot of shit but goddamn when they were on they were on and i liked the controller yeah that yeah, was one that of the more comfortable controllers to hold i think i i feel that the xbox controller was very similar to that yeah yeah like the original bertha not the eventual design that they got to which is the perfect game controller yeah sorry i mean it it really is although i've gotta i've gotta give a shout out to the dual shock right because they knocked it out of the park with uh the first dual shock yep and it just really didn't fucking change like everything that Sony has tried to add on has just been kind of forgettable. What about six axis, dog? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. You control like, those you arrows. Like, what about the pressure sensitive like, face buttons? I actually didn't hate those because they really made sense in MGS. Mm -hmm. And you could feel it. Like the um so in Metal Gear Solid, you would hold square to raise your gun, right? Mm -hmm. And if you let go real quick, he would fire. But if you eased off the button, Snake would slowly put it down. And it, it really, like, got you it in was that headspace, cool. that yeah. tension where it's just like, mm, no, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> so by pressure sensitive, they really just mean analog, right? Yeah, it was analog yeah. face buttons. Yeah. And, has, I mean, trying to think of it, does anyone do that nowadays? You have analog triggers, but does anyone actually yeah. do the face buttons analog? No. Probably not, no. No, because yeah, um, I mean, the like the uh, remastered Metal Gear Solid series that you could get for the PS3, um, you had to actually play them a little bit differently because you couldn't do the pressure sensitive buttons. Yeah, there oh. was like a hidden key combination to put your gun away because um, they they did that same exact thing on the uh, the GameCube remake of MGS One Twin Snakes. Which, by the way, was I really liked it. I know some people don't because it very much anime anime fies uh, all of the cutscenes mm -hmm. in Metal Gear Solid, but um, it played really well. It looked good, and god damn, MGS One is just a solid fucking game. <laughs> Love MGS One. 
at some point, I, I don't think we need to do it now. We need to come up with like a discernible list, like the must play franchises. Because yeah. I feel that I have some gaps that are pretty shameful. Oh, yeah. And I, like, I know I, I did. Like, I did, RTS like I've never are a massive blind spot for me. Well, but I mean, there's not really any huge ones. Like, Red Al or Command and Conquer is probably the only like huge name. I had mean, Starcraft. Starcraft? Obviously. But that's not really a franchise so much. There's two installments. Yeah. But like, but like, I've never played a Metal Gear. I've never played a um, uh, fucking Shepard. Um, Mass, Mass Effect. Effect. Yeah. I've never Mass played Effect. a Fallout. Fallout is... Uh, Fallout 3 is fun. New Vegas is great. 4 is bad. Did you play the the first two, like the OGs, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, and they they are, are different. extremely yeah. Oh yeah, like that's why I was asking. School, I was curious if you like them or not. I do like them, but it is they they haven't aged great. Um, like they're they're fine, but they are absolutely products of their time. Mm. Uh, Dobby does call out. There is probably one RTS outside of Command and Conquer that could kind of be seen as a franchise, and that's Warcraft. We I do did have play Warcraft Palmer. 3. I, I guess Warcraft 3 transcends those genre boundaries. Well, because its fucking online modes were insane. I never played it online. I, I mostly played the single-player campaign, which was incredible. Uh, I never did the campaign. I only did um the online stuff because, like, you know, OG Dota, Hero Defenses, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Um, at some point, I would maybe even, a, not even a full cast, but a cast based on that. Uh, Delaz, yeah. um, his top three coming in pretty much, oh, the inverse of mine almost. He said 364, then Odyssey. All right. Didn't want to miss that from earlier. Which one was the one that you, you couldn't kill stuff by jumping on it? You had to like jump on its head and then pick it up and throw it. Two. Was that two? Okay. I thought that was two. That one is weird. Two. Two was definitely two, two was I, I didn't Mario. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate yeah. it though. It, it was weird, Mario. but I didn't hate it. With, <laughs> her coming out there with the, the gaming history, stealing my thunder. Yeah, I beat you to it. Now I think everyone knows that. Like AOL's in chat calling it out too. Yeah. It was Doki Lost Doki levels. Man. It was literally a reskin. Lost they Levels had, was Mario 2. Yeah, they had a Mario 2 in Japan. It was Mario 1, but you know, more expansive levels, new mechanics, and it was hard as fucking nails. And when mm -hmm. they, they gave it to testers in America, mm -hmm. the overwhelming consensus was, why would you put out something so hateful? Um, so they said, ah, shit, we got to release something with Mario branding. Uh, I don't know. Change the skin on this game. Last levels had Peach nude Peach too. No. Oh, no. no mod. Fuck you. Fuck you. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody has those like large, like game gaps in their and what they've played, like the repertoire. Yeah, it's like, I never really played. There's Tomb always a giant series that everybody's got a giant series or like hugely popular game that they just never played. Yeah, like Scott calls out uh, Resident Evils. Mm -hmm. He said he tried one of the remakes and didn't like it. But the fact that he got all the way to a remake, which would have effectively been what? Eight by number and all the side ones? Yeah. Yeah. Or seven by number than all the side ones. Mm -hmm. That's I an impressive a, dodge. Old school Resident Evil fan. Um, and then four was, you, you couldn't not play four. That basically wrote the playbook for how to build a, um, like a sort of horror um third person shooter which you know what on to ruin the franchise but i hate four because four also showed another blueprint that bethesda fucking ran with and that is yeah. you could put the game anywhere and keep selling it aka skyrim <laughs> resident evil 4 was the original skyrim it was released so many fucking times on so many different platforms and so many different editions but it did have a chainsaw controller for the gamecube so all is forgiven <laughs> Fair enough. Indeed. But enough of that. We can get on to that as a later time. I'd 
we could do like an entire fucking show based on misses. <laughs> Games um, we've never played. <laughs> Let's yeah. do the inverse episode. So what haven't you guys played this week? Well, I haven't played everything. <laughs> the entire Nintendo um, catalog. So um Adam, you yes. played a new game that I been wanting to pick up and haven't picked up yet. What'd you think of um Asshole Reincarnate the game? I mean, Goose game. <laughs> Untitled Goose Game. Yeah, I've been waiting on this to I was waiting on the Steam release, honestly. Um Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. It's it's a good time. Uh it, it's everybody wants to be a mischievous goose inconveniencing everybody terrorizing the neighborhood. It, there, you just, go, there you go. There you go. It's everything you want. It's too nice. <laughs> but no, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's funny. It's it's got you know sound design plus what? What did we get up to? Sound design plus three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, love... when you put your head in a bottle, I lost it. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you get you get your uh, little goose controls. You can walk around. You can you you hit. L2 to kind of like duck down and you can hit R2 to flap your wings and you can hit square to honk. And it's just, you know, everything you could ever want. Yonk, yonk. Um, but no, no, it's just it's a bunch of little things. Like the animations are honestly really good. Like it, the animations for the bird are really good. And it's just funny. Like it's a good time. It's that sort of goat simulator brand of pure joy into a video game because it's just silly and you don't take it too seriously yeah uh, but no you know I, I really I like liked to it that gameplay too so the the game feel is very much hitman i wondered if that's where you were going weird. with it <laughs> yeah which sounds God, weird Tom, to tom's new dark souls <laughs> yeah it's it's very very run around be mischievous and uh be a dick to everyone you know the only mm. difference is the goose doesn't kill anyone that I'm aware of. Mm. I mean, the DLC in the future. <laughs> but no, I, I do um, like so the, the flow of the gameplay, right? You get into a new area or whatever, and then you have a list of objectives. And some of them, at first, you're like, well, how am I going to do that? And usually there are... I don't know that there's always like multiple ways to do it, but there's always like a little bit of puzzling like there's there's a little yes. um it's like exercising your creativity and outside of the box thinking to get these little challenges done what i liked on some of them while you were doing one thing you could observe something happening and it would let you realize that's how you can do something else mm -hmm. yeah exactly and like you had the brilliant idea when it came to break the uh, broomstick. Yeah, <laughs> you literally tried to break it, and you did something that was genius. <laughs> but the game wasn't designed to actually break the broomstick. No, I was kind of mad about that one. I was like, "Oh, come on, that's yeah. got to be the way," and it wasn't the way. So, for full disclosure, his task to break a broomstick, he closed a fucking garage door on the broomstick, and it didn't break because it's not what they wanted you to do. No. That's probably the only time I saw it kind of on rails. Ooh. A little bit, yeah. But no, it's it's all the um, little things, like the little interactable things. Like there's a set of walkie-talkies, right? And you you can grab one and move it to one area, and then you hold the other one in your beak. And then if you honk while that's on, your honk sound will go through the other walkie-talkie, and you can distract people that way from afar. Like it's little things like that that just <laughs> really pull the game together so why aren't we using this game's actual title which is metal goose solid <laughs> <laughs> fuck you um bobby does ask a question that i don't know the answer to i know it's coming uh -huh. out soon uh did the multiplayer launch yes yeah it came out with the Ooh. steam release there's a multiplayer mode i haven't checked it out we're, tom we're gonna have to do that to, <laughs> yeah we're, we're gonna have to to goose up the place <laughs> Oh Jesus! Goose but yeah, un Untitled Goose Game is just—it's a lot of fun. I would recommend it for sure. It's not something I'm gonna play like a ton, but you know, for the what hour I played it, maybe. Yeah, it was a great time. Do you think you'll go back and beat it? I don't know. I might. If I'm bored one day and I don't know what to play, that might be something I could just grab and. It's 
basically a stress-free yeah. kind of game. Yeah, I see that being very much a mood game. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. Having a bad uh, day, take it out on the innocent civilians, you know. Make a little kid run and cry into a phone booth. Exactly. I, I just love the premise. There's it a is. nice, quiet, idyllic village in the English countryside, and you are a horrible goose. Yep. The end. That's it. <laughs> it's perfect. It's very realistic, because geese are fucking horrible. They are. They always walk around like they own the place. They've just got that like Fuck. overly <laughs> confident, <laughs> arrogant stride. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, there was also a new game that I don't think's ever been discussed around here, played by both you guys. Yes. At least I don't think Tom's <laughs> ever hit on this. Um, so I don't know. I'll just let you guys take it from here. Yeah, post void. Holy crap! Eyes uh, bleed. The game. <laughs> so it's um. So I'm going to briefly describe the game and then I'm going to read one of the my favorite Steam review for it and it will kind of get the, the mood. So the game is a first person shooter, kind of old school, like old school Doom and old school Wolfenstein and stuff. Uh, very fast paced and it's kind of like, like trippy and psychedelic or whatever. But one of the game reviews says, Wolfenstein's level layout had a hate child with Quake's movement and that child overdosed on experimental hallucinogens while having a stroke good game recommended and that pretty I much love that, all some, that and it says good game good game yes it's exactly it's a yeah. it's a adrenaline rush in a game right it's a very fast-paced psychedelic trippy shooter um so, so adam streamed this and i couldn't tell what was going on at first in the stream <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah so it's one of those games where like Everything, I, I hate using the word trippy and over and over again, but it's very like psychedelic, trippy. Everything is always moving, even like the walls and the, it's, it's a lot of narrow corridors and stuff, but none of the walls are completely straight. Like everything's got kind of a curve. Everything's off. Everything is just weird and like moving around and breathing and the colors are very vibrant and it's also kind of dark and evil with like the the enemy designs and stuff and the violence it's very um kind of in the same way that hotline miami is right yeah you've got that yeah that uh very violent but also bright col colorful. colorful trippy thing going on with it um but basically the premise of the game is you have to get to the end of the level without dying and the thing is your health bar, which is this little vial of liquid you're holding in your left hand, is constantly going down. If you stand still, you die. And the only way to replenish your health is to kill enemies. And that gives you a little bit of your, your health back. So it really encourages a very fast-paced gameplay because you have to get to the next enemy and kill that next enemy. Otherwise, the timer runs out and you die. Um, really excellent game design for what they're trying to achieve because the game is, like I said, an absolute adrenaline rush the whole time because you're just always you're you're on you're on the move always. Um, everything from the music, which is like uh, the sort of dirty surfer upbeat rock stuff, but it's like distorted and and loud and constant and fast. Um, the music never stops between levels and everything. It just it's just always on. This game is, you know, pedal to the floor the whole time, pretty much. It it knows what it's going for in a fucking. Nail. It does, yeah, exactly. And it's not like this huge, you know, giant game you could spend fifty hours in or whatever. Like, the game is three bucks. Um, it's. I forgot to also mention the the visuals are very pixelated old school style so if you're not into like retro kind of looking games you're probably not going to be a big fan like of this Wolfenstein 3d it, it just yes. straight up looks like wolf 3d mm -hmm. in some sense mm -hmm. um, i do like that the game is endemically giftable right like it's yeah it's, it's three dollars throw it on somebody's list just like i did to dobby just now uh, -huh. uh yeah i said it I'm calling you out <laughs> and, and the way it plays Everyone can play it because it just—it's so quick. You just jump an entire, in. 
Adam's best run through that I watched him do probably took three and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's also sort of a, I don't want to say roguelite or whatever, but it plays sort of like that. Um, the levels are procedurally generated a little bit. There's some variation, so it's not the same every time you play exactly. Um, and you have to get through all the levels. I think there's 11 levels. I have yet to get past the fifth level. Like It's kind of difficult, for, at least for me. Um, and then between each level, you get to choose between three perks. So it might be, you know, instead of using your normal starting pistol, you have an Uzi, or you can change to a shotgun, or there might be one with uh, larger magazines so you don't have to reload as often, quicker reloads. I think there's one to um, your your bullets will bounce off the walls and ricochet and stuff. Like there's all these little perks that you choose from in between each run. So you can sort of make each run your own, um, but I, d I don't think it's like super in-depth strategy you know binding of isaac style or anything but it's no. it's it's enough to keep the game interesting and to give a little variation to each run which i think is important because you're going to be playing the first few levels over and over and over and over again until you get good enough yeah. not to die and then you'll Midnight die basketball. later and still what play the first time like? yeah what does rope like actually mean um and it's generally referring to games that have um like random generation is usually a core tenet of a roguelike game permadeath. So if you die, you're starting over the game from scratch. Um, and that like every run, is going to be a little bit different. Worth mentioning yeah, that, no, that no rogue, game. rogue was a game that had these specific attributes. And then other games now are called roguelike because it contains yeah. some of those uh, novel, novel attributes of the game rogue that other games didn't have at the time. Before we had the coined genre of first-person shooter, any first-person shooter was called a Doom clone. Yeah. Doom was not the first first-person shooter, but that's what everybody called them. And to Dobby's question, Rogue Light is referring to the fact of stuff like Rogue Legacy where there's a there's persistence between runs. Yeah, there's something there that is... you're you're constantly unlocking or getting better at or there's there's progress even in failed runs, whereas a true rogue like is fully permanent death. Like there's there's no carryover between runs. But other than that, they will play matter. very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, this this game is a fucking rush, and it's I will say this. Because it is a love fest, and I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Uh -huh. First glance, it really is hard to see what's going on. It really yeah. fucking is. Like you it's will spend probably your first five runs just trying to figure out what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kinda. And and I think it's intentionally that way too. But like I I think the the couple times I've died in level five was literally because I couldn't see what was happening because these certain enemies they'll like. They'll get right up on you, and then like everything's kind of glowing, and their attacks are glowing, and you can't see. Um, it's it's very disorienting at, at times, for sure. Yeah, it's super. Like even after I knew what was happening, your level four once the verticality got into the game, and it yeah. wasn't just straight running, uh -huh. dude. That that's brutal. Yeah, like, yeah I was for lost. Sure. I'm just like, I understand someone's in front of Adam. Adam shoots bad guy, and that's yeah. all I got at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the first three the first three levels are straight up just corridor shooters. Like, you know, follow the path to the end. There's no real maze or, or level layout so much. It's just these hallways navigate to the end and you're done. And then you get to level four and all of a sudden um, there's verticality to the levels. You're jumping on uh, like a second story platform that leads to a tunnel that leads to this other area. And it's easier to get lost. And there were a couple of times where... I died because I didn't know where to go and I didn't have any enemies to kill in that specific area to keep myself alive long enough to figure out where to go. So that was so my initial hurdle enemies, with four. Well, enemies keep spawning or is it pretty much if you get lost, you're dead because nothing's spawning behind you? Um, I think there are... I don't really know how the game... I believe the enemies are handles enemies. Yeah, as far as I know, there's probably a certain amount of enemies in each level. And because yeah. if that's the case, if you get lost, you're fucked. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, because you, your time's going to run out. Mm -hmm. Like if you recover from getting lost, that's impressive. 
Yeah. We we do have to add the the disclaimer though. Like if you're if you're interested in post void, please don't be epileptic. Um, if you are <laughs> epileptic, if you have issues with flashing lights or patterns, like if any of that is kind of ah for you, do not play this game. You will die. And that that's not a <laughs> euphemism. Like, it's, it's they even have like warnings up on the Steam page saying, "Hey guys, be fucking careful with this because yeah. if you have epilepsy, it will trigger a seizure." Um, yeah, it is a lot, a lot of bright flashing colors, a lot of things moving on screen at once, and when you when die, you, yeah, Holy when shit. when you die, it flashes yeah. like fifteen images in half of a second. Um, yeah, like I I don't have issues with flashing lights, right? I uh -huh. do not have epilepsy of any kind. It's intense for me, mm -hmm. like especially standing or sitting this close to a um, to the screen. It's just like literal whiteout of my vision with everything flashing and going on mm -hmm. uh it's it's kind of a an experience so there is an and option Tom, in the settings to remove i think it's just that sequence when you die that okay. like flashing images um i don't know what else it it removes but there is an option to kind of reduce some of that you know epileptic inducing <laughs> seizure thing but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know end, how much it does, and I'm sure that if you actually do have epilepsy, that's you know, when you're sensitive to, probably, yeah, dangerous. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't fuck with it. That's for sure. Yeah. But that said, I will personally fuck with the game because I think it looks cool, it's, and it's going to be a really fun run based throw away some time. Yep. And again, it's three dollars. Yeah, it's literally three dollars. I don't know, man. The I felt I bank. got my three dollars worth, like my third run into the game, which would have been about okay. three minutes of gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes of gameplay. That's about how much I got into a game I recently bought and refunded. Oh, oh really? Oh, um, what did you get? So, um, Dobby and I were playing some geometry wars three, uh, old game, just playing some two player. It was fun. We were just doing some different shit. And then all of a sudden we started talking about, you know, geometry wars two on Xbox live arcade or Xbox live or, Live arcade is so fucking good. And then got to talking about Pagel. 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 Pagel was fun. Turns out Pagel's on Steam. Ooh. So we went to pick up Pagel because we was going to play some multiplayer Pagel. Well, we, um, we have to go through the first stage to unlock multiplayer. We do so and then find out that they did nothing to update the game. And it's worse than the Xbox edition and doesn't what? offer online play. Oh, I never played Peg. No online, online. and I it's strictly Peggle. strictly four by three. Oh, uh, what the hell, man! Yeah, you, can't, you have to warn people. You can't just say shit like that. So, um, yeah, that got refunded pretty quick. And no, Scott, not sex. I, I saw your joke there. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, uh, Peggle, that was kind of That awful. sucks, yeah. Especially because it was like a game you've already played and you loved back in the day, and it's like a, a cool nostalgia. To, hey, let's jump back into this game we haven't played in forever. This will be awesome. And then you can't do the things that you, that you were playing it to do. It's like, that's, doing... that's, yeah, yeah. It's... that's even yeah, more disappointing really than just checking that. out a new game and not liking it. Or more disappointing than realizing all the game's not available. I'd rather that be the case. <laughs> like, just just don't have it there. Yeah. <laughs> don't allure me with that. Yep. the The original Peggle was a a masterclass in game feel, right? Because the the game itself is pretty boring if you get rid of all the nice features around it and and the nice like feelings uh, around the gameplay. You are literally firing a ball and playing Plinko with a game's physics engine. That's that's it. You, that's the whole game. But you underestimate you how addicting just that is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, like it's it's fun. But like all the little things, like your final shot when you're gonna get above that score, everything slows down. It zooms in. It hits, and then there's like an explosion of fireworks and confetti and bullshit. Ode to Joy starts playing. Like there's there's shit happening all over the screen. It's just fantastic it takes something that could have been relatively bland and boring and safe and instead makes it like this gigantic fucking firework show for just finishing a stage 
And also another big design thing they did is with your combos, the more pegs you hit, the higher your multiplier. And every time you hit a peg, it has a tone. The tone yep. gets a higher and higher pitch as your combo gets higher and higher, <laughs> which is a super nice fucking touch. And I want to call out, Dobby calls out there was duels. It's not referring to one-on-one -on -one online duels. It's referring to uh, what they're considered like a boss battle where you can duel the individual peoples. Hmm. Or also you could split screen it, which was the or same console or PC rather. But yeah, Peggle. It's a thing, and it sucks now. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I did jump into another old game, though. Um, oh. No Man's Sky. I say old as in like... It's not relative. that old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh. it's, like, it's like five years old. Um, they had a monster that? update. It's like their third huge update they've had since launch. And yeah, this is kind of cool. They added a shit ton of environmental stuff. So previously, it's been like, hey, we're making the underworlds uh, bigger, more pronounced. We're adding base building. And now they're fixed. They're adding to their um, engine for their procedurally generated. Oh, you see, I don't. OK, Renee calls out 12 large updates. I, I view the large updates as effectively just the water expansion, the base building, and then the... Um, this one is really what I view as the big. There was there's they've had a fuck ton of updates, but right now they're on build that they're calling 3.0. Um, so they're calling it the third active state of the game, really. But this shit's crazy. Say, but it's kind of amazing to me that it went from like one of the most poorly received game launches of all time to holy shit, look at all this free fucking content that they just keep putting their heart and soul into. Like, No Man's Sky today, if somebody wants to buy it, like, don't even wait for a sale. It's really good, as is, at, like, even, even like, a $40 price point. I'd say it's great. 60 Yeah, I could see that argument. But, like, when it came I, out, nah. I, I still dug it then, but it's still a niche game. Very niche game. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone. It's still very chill. Very um, kind of like explorey, but this recent update, all the terrain stuff they added, I've seen some of it, and I will say this niche game better deal. Um, the mountain worlds they niche introduced like these huge, huge mountainscapes. Somebody's phone wasn't muted. That sorry. is Tom. Oh, sorry, alarm. sorry for interrupting. Proceed, but um. These mountain worlds that they've added into No Man's Sky now are just nuts. Like you have, like if you're in your plane flying around, you can't explore properly because all the valleys and shit, like you, you'll hit a mountain. And if you're going to get up over the mountain, you don't have view. So it's just fucking impossible to explore it unless you get out on foot. But yeah, there's a lot of new wildlife they've added. They've added insects. I saw this floating like octopus kind of thing was kind of cool hmm. but uh the biggest thing fidelity wise i think they added uh, was the um you can have binary systems and stuff like that more than one sun per system so you'll get some of those cool star wars sunrises oh where you have cool suns and shit which is really really fucking cool um and yeah renee calls out like they added volcano worlds uh, your hot worlds that are like super hot and super heat. Sometimes so random hot. events will occur and they'll just catch the fucking world on, or the parts of the world on fire. And there's now a, a randomly generated gopher that Renee discovered that looks just like Sid from fucking uh, Ice Age. Volcano uh, world. So hot right now. <laughs> so hot. But no, there, there's a lot of really cool shit. I only played probably a couple hours. So I didn't see much of it because they didn't start the universe over, thankfully. They just um, like, hey, we're going to add some of this stuff into existing systems and then kind of make some new systems. Oh, okay. So they did it in a really nice way. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, if you've been kind of thinking about getting back to it, now's probably a good time to get back to it. So yeah, No Man's Sky. I did some more of that. Is there an explorer mode um, in that game where you have unlimited resources and stuff and you can just fly around and look at stuff? 
I there is a sandbox mode. Okay. So I think in sandbox mode they might allow that. I don't know. Creative. It's Renee's calling. That was yeah. That was my biggest issue the last time I played it. Is that like the resource grind is something I'm just not interested in. Like I mm -hmm. literally just want to play the game to wander around. Like like you're playing fucking randomly generated Google Earth. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, yeah, that's I'm, what I. Every time I would launch, it's like, oh, you need you need more of this stuff. There's always something gotta, nagging you, like, hey, you need this. Oh, you can't do this because you need this, but you have to do this first because you need this. Yeah, I, I'm so, not super interested in No Man's Sky from that perspective. I don't want to play a survival game. I want to play a, a tourist game. I, I will say it gets to the point where that's not really a system you worry about. Like for me right now, when I want to do shit, I'm like, okay, I just make some warp cells and I go. I literally go to my inventory, craft, 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 done. Mm -hmm. That's too much effort for me. I'm supremely... That was like six crafts. Yeah. Okay, I could just do craft done. No, look, I, I don't want to no, but... make fucking mac and cheese over here. I just want to explore <laughs> space. Yeah, no, I... Craft, 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 that... craft. If you're strictly wanting to explore... I could see that being frustrating because there are really cool worlds gated behind stuff. Like you have to have a warp drive of certain caliber to be able to get to all the systems mm -hmm. and you need to be able to craft warp cells to be able to use your warp drive. And if you don't have the stuff to craft a warp cell, you're stuck within the two to seven planets that are in your current system. So yeah, I can, I can see that causing a slog for people that don't like that. But if you're willing to actually play through the game, like do their campaign beats, which are kind of eh, you will end up at a spot though where you don't need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And for you guys personally, um, Bird and I made a little bit of a bank at one point. So if you ever really want to play and not deal with it, just let us know and we'll give you all the money you'll ever need to not have to deal with it. <laughs> oh, that sounds fantastic. But yeah, it's still really rad, still really going on. So um, yeah, I was doing some of that. I might end up doing some of that after this too. Yeah. It was really fun. Relaxing Sunday or Saturday night. Yeah. I put on some music and it's just chilling. The music in the game is fantastic. Yes, it is. It is. I normally don't put music on over the top of it, but I was really feeling a certain thing. So I'm like, I'm listening to this. Ah, well, Tom, you also had an old game. Did I? Actually, you had a few games. Just, just do one of your games. Do we pick a game? Oh, I'm beyond. Pick a game and talk about it, one. please. Just, just do one. Just... No, uh... no. <laughs> we'll save okay. that shot I just made. Uh, so, oh, nice. Uh, a couple different stealth games. I tried out Invisible Ink, um, which is kind of cool. It's like a turn-based infiltrate, go steal something, and, and get out random levels. I, I literally only played like an hour and a half of this, um, but. It was pretty fun. Uh, each each person that you have has got like their own abilities. Like one guy's better at hacking uh, security cameras. Another person's like good at combat. Um, it's kind of neat. Um, the game doesn't want you to min max everything. Like that's that's not the purpose. So what they do is they give you a time limit, but it's not like a standard time limit. Like it's a big risk reward system. Uh, the longer you stay, like every turn increases the the amount of alarm state that the game has. And if the alarms reach certain stages, like guards will start looking around, like they know something hinky is going on. And then if it gets to the next level, like they're actively hunting you down and looking for you. And um, it, it sort of gives you a way to say, you know, hey, there's all these optional objectives. How many can I get? And how how far do I want to push this envelope? And, and you know, how how hard do I want to make this on myself or should I just do the one thing I actually need and get the hell out? So it's a nice, like constant balance in, in the uh, like analysis of how much do I want to get out of this mission and how much do I need to get out of it? And what's the level of risk that I can tolerate? Um, how, how confident am I feeling? Um, and it's kind of neat. Um, I'm, I'm digging it so far. Haven't played a bunch of it. I have played a bunch of Hitman too, uh, and I've been playing some uh, some of their more elusive missions. So basically, there's um, there's missions that are, I think, either randomly generated or put out by the devs, where you only have a certain number of times to complete them. 
and they always have a cool twist. So there's one, like I had to dress up as a shaman and I've got to kill a guy that wants to be part of the, like, I, I don't know, shamans groupies or whatever. So I, uh, I found the shaman. He went off to like, take a piss out in the woods. I started choking him out and the guy I'm supposed to kill is just like, Hey man, what's up with that chokehold? You better stop or I'm going to call the cops. I'm like, oh shit. So like he is literally running away from me to go get the cops. It's just me and him all alone. I, I <laughs> hunker down, grab the shaman's clothes, right? So now I'm wearing the disguise, which is my objective. And uh, I just start firing blindly in his general direction. Uh, and I do end up killing him as the shaman. Turns out, nobody else was around. Nobody saw me fuck up that badly. And by the way, there's no save states in this mode, so you kind of live with what you did. Um, and it worked. I, uh, I went to a bus stop, I got the fuck out of that level, and I completed it, and it was so much fucking fun. Like, playing Hitman with save states is great, and that's the usual way I play. I, I save scum my way through everything. <laughs> but these elusive targets take that away from you, so you really have to improvise with what you've got. Uh, and I'm, I'm loving it so much more, because it's it, like it just devolves into chaos. It's just a game all about devolving into like shittier and shittier versions of itself. <laughs> Which, as a sentence, doesn't sound like something positive, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> like, like uh, yeah, so in, in Metal Gear Solid, imagine if you could just, like, hit F5, save the game anywhere, and you'd never have to put up with your consequences, right? It would be mm -hmm. way less interesting. Like, it's cool to perfect stealth your way through a game. It's not so cool to perfect stealth your way through, like, using 100 save states, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, there's, there's a certain amount of randomness and and fucking up that makes a, a stealth action game more fun and these missions in hitman are specifically designed to give you that feeling um and i'm i'm digging it so much it is great now again if you're one of these 100 completion people you're gonna hate this because you flunk out so many times that target goes away like they're just oh. gone you can't reset like <laughs> There's nothing you can do to get that person back. Um, so it's not for everyone, but I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, when I first heard about the elusive target, Ben, I'm like, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. That turns into an event. Yes. But yeah. So yeah sounds, um, sounds really cool. I also, I also played um, Sad Fight Club. Figure it out. Uh, so I decided to uh, start playing through, we'll continue playing through Shadow of the Colossus, the uh, the remake. Oh. Um, and God damn, every time I play that game, I just love it more. Um, except that, like, there, there are certain things where if you haven't played this game before, or if you haven't played it in a long time, figuring out the one stupid thing that you need to do to get the, pro the Colossus to progress to the next, you know, section of the fight... The, is yeah. obtuse, annoying, and just incomprehensible. It feels like an old school adventure game sometimes. You're like, oh wait, no, now now I gotta stand up on here, and then he hits this thing, and then a torch falls out, and then I make a mustache out of cat hair and duct tape. And uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> like some that's an exaggeration. Game. Yeah, it's it's what? not that bad. It's not as bad as old Lucas Arts adventure games, but it gets close. Well, you say it like an old adventure game. I mean, it's it's definitely an older game. It is PS2 era, uh, and it's like that's if you can look past that, the game itself is a goddamn masterpiece. Like there's there's very little to criticize about the game other than that. Um, and if you haven't played Shadow of the Colossus and you want to kill something that's really fucking cool and have an incredible boss fight and then feel like the world's biggest piece of shit afterwards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my favorite games of all time. It's in my top 10 for sure. There's just yeah, something about it. Never it's it. just something special. I think it's so good. Irk, you might actually like this. I mean, you're, you're not going <laughs> to that crazy. mean you might actually like this. Because it's like it's a thematic, it's a like heavy on themes game, but it doesn't skimp on the gameplay, right? 
It's now, boss it doesn't let game. you. It doesn't let you push an old couple down the stairs, killing them. But it <laughs> hey. possibly make you sad. I give people Probably what not. they fucking deserve. That's all that needs to be said. <laughs> um, and, like where, like Shadow of the Colossus has got um, an interesting story, but it's one you have to look for. It's it's not like this game that throws a bunch of cutscenes in your way. Like literally, there's a cutscene before and after. Uh, each Colossus or each mission, and they're tiny. Like, they're tiny, they're self-contained, and most of it is some guy in the ceiling saying, hey, you should go over here to the lake. Cool. That's it. Um, so there's, there's literally, there's, no, there's a small that. there's a small section of dialogue in between each Colossus, and literally yeah. no other dialogue in the entire game. So it's hmm. very, it, it presents you a story, but doesn't tell you the story. Yeah. It's an inferred story. I think a lot of it is anyway. So if you just want to ignore it and go kill giant things, you totally can. Mm -hmm. Nothing's stopping you. Sounds like my type of game. No, I think um, you would actually like this. I think you would like it. It's not a game I avoid. It's just not a game I've ever sought out. Yeah, I but, think yeah. That, that's about it for me. Um, Yeah, I've Adam, do you got anything from EFT you want to get at? Um, no, not really. Tom's got me wanting to play um, Shadow of the Colossus again now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've also been playing uh, Rocket League, and I want to use this kind of as a segue to the news. Because, yeah, yeah. dude, tourney mode. That shit's legit. Oh, hold on. That shit's legit when it works. Yeah, uh, they've was... had some monster server issues with tournament mode. I mean, I mean, the big part of the the news is that Rocket League is now free to play. Yes. And geez, did you see the peak concurrent players? Was it like one point two mil? They hit one point five million today. Good God! It it beat so the all time peak of CS:GO players. So you remember it... whenever I was asking like a month or two ago of. Doesn't everyone already have it that's going to play it? No. Is it really going to be a big <laughs> boom from free to play? The answer is no. <laughs> my foot is going in my mouth right after this show. What's, like that what's is more amazing, though, is that, like, probably I, I would say a million out of those 1.5 are Diamond 2, but only because they've got bad teammates. They're really like Camper <laughs> Grant Chap. No, I love the, the term. Uh, the Bronze Army to describe all the new players that are coming in. <laughs> bronze Army, that's good. I, I love that. That's that's really good. But no, uh, so the tournament mode. Uh, I think I've hit on it a little last week because we had the trial. Mm -hmm. But like we've had full gone tournaments now. Like Adam and I and Smig played in one and got eight or top eight. Um, the crate system works great. Yeah, it's it's just so much fucking fun. Yeah. It yeah, the tournament thing is nice. Games. It does. And it, and it's I don't know, it's um it's just a, it feels different than than ranked. You've got you've got a bracket, you've got you know all the tournament things. It makes you feel like you're in esports even though you're you know just a, a whatever rank you are, a low rank player. It it gives that just kind of competitive event feeling. Yeah, it 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 just feels really good. And Dobby wants me to fucking call it out. Uh, him and I got second place in one of our tournaments we did. We hey. went in with a rando and got second. That's awesome. Which sucks because um, if you win, you get a title. You get an actual in-game title saying, hey, you won this tier of uh, tournament. And then it changes color every time you win one. So it's actually got some pretty cool swag to go along with it if you pull off a win. That's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah. I it's really a, like that. It reminds me of the old ES. It reminds me of the old ESL kind of stuff. Only it's all in game. You don't have to seek it out. It's there, which is really cool. Uh, the Rocket Pass came out. Um, the wheels are, I think, dog shit. Um, they have some cool non-wheel stuff. They um, have some cool goal explosions. They have a really cool player banner. I think anyway. But all in all, I think the best biggest takeaway of the Rocket Pass is everyone loves a new truck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Noct I haven't played with it yet. Noctane Hitbox, and it looks pretty clean. 
it, it, that's the the harbinger, right? Yes. I, th I thought it was the Ford F one fifty Super Duty. <laughs> either or, I I'll, I'll take either answer for five hundred. <laughs> Super Ultra Mega and then, Duty. What sucks is uh, so the way rocket passes work. The last tier of the rocket pass, you get a um, what's it called? Uh, the vehicle, a different version of it. And then that's the vehicle that you get painted later on. The um, version of this doesn't have the cab on, or the topper on the back. So it's just an engine in the back, which kind of looks tacky to me. So, yeah. And what'd you guys say this one's called, the car? The Harbinger? Har Harbinger. Okay. So I said Harbinger or Har Harbinger. 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 Harbinger is what I was saying. Yeah. Harbinger. Har but yeah, either way. Um, so they also have the llama events. Harbinger. Harbinger. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Harbinger. <laughs> Damn. Sorry. I got sidetracked. Any of you guys can take over. <laughs> nah. I like this. Yeah, I'm good. Speaking <laughs> so, uh, of uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 being fucking great, um, Konami just did a, a thing. They, uh, they're releasing... Yeah. Metal Gear, MGS One, MGS Two, and a uh, collector series of like old Castlevania shit to GOG.com, which sounds fucking great. Uh, except that these are the same ports that they were twenty years ago, and they're basically the most broken thing in the world. Uh, like there are fan patches to make this playable, uh, but if you just buy it, um, yeah, nah, it's it's not good. Yeah, like, why would they do so that? Because Konami's a bunch of lazy fucks. Because hey, we have these PC ports that already exist. Let's um, let's Konami's just not interested put them on the in store. Do anything? They're they're interested in making money in pachinko machines, and that's fucking it. So I know that um, there are some bugs in in those PC ports, and then like even the music is a little bit different because. Um, I can't remember the reasoning, but it's not like the same audio files from the, the original version. So there's actually like a couple of tracks missing. So there's an asa there's a sound there's a soundtrack that plays when you get spotted by an enemy, right? And it's the chase music. And then there's a, another song that plays when the chase is over, but they're still kind of looking for you. The evasion music, which from yeah. what I understand is missing from this. And then the oh. boss battle music is missing, and it just plays the chase music during the boss fights. God. Mm. How lazy is that fucking port? I don't know. Lazy enough that it's still lazy 20 years later. I guess so. So at this point, if you want to play Metal Gear Solid 1, maybe your best bet is just to, I don't know, find a disc and then uh, use it on your emulator. Find a legally acquired disc and use it on your emulator. Do, is it on PS Now? Or is PS Now a little newer than that? If you have a PS3 uh, laying around, you can buy it on the store and play it. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think, though. Like, MGS3 is on PS Now. I know for sure. I think 2 uh -huh. is. But 1, one I don't know about. Other than Twin Snakes, I don't think there's been, like, a legit re-release of MGS1. Yeah, other than having it in the... Yeah, other than in the store... For the ps3 because i do have it on my ps3 hmm. but um but yeah from what i heard that there are there are actually some fan like mods that fix a lot of the bugs from the the pc ports so if, if you're okay with installing some mods to get everything going smooth um it actually is fine but it's gonna take the mod yeah it you get it you're gonna have to go through the extra few steps or whatever you shouldn't have to download mods for no. a game to be acceptable. No, you absolutely shouldn't have to. <laughs> like, like, damn it, like, I was gonna say, like, here's looking at you, Bethesda. <laughs> like, to the point of the PC ports being bad, like, it supports supposedly popular controllers because it supports X input, but it doesn't natively support DualShock 4 or Xbox controllers. Like you gotta, you gotta actually oh configure stuff within uh, X input and stuff to get everything working. Like you can't just boot the game up and use your controller and play. 
I was so excited for this. Like I was, I was like, oh my god, there's a story where I'm not going to end it with fuck Konami. I saw the. I'm, I'm <laughs> I saw... excited about this prospect, and then, then yeah, the news hit. I saw the news article, the initial news article. I put it in our our uh, chat in Discord. All excited to show Tom, you know, planning to buy it as soon as I got home. And yeah, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. I, st I don't know. I still just, might get it and then do the mods. And I'm saying so it right here. I'm going to emulate that shit. It works perfect in emulators. I've got the discs in that room. You can mm -hmm. play discs with emulators today. Why the fuck would I bother with, with buying something that's... I also I'm remember... I there was a... Um, I remember a Reddit post maybe a year or two ago where somebody had compiled the PC port with all the fixes into a single installable EXE. So that's out there somewhere. Not that I can condone acquiring such a thing. But <laughs> if you own a physical copy of the game, <laughs> or if you want to just like, you know, give Konami your $10 or whatever it is for the ports and then just install this one instead, I don't know. Lawyers. That's, some, that's something that exists. Or acknowledge that you haven't played the game in the last 20 years and you don't really need to and you only really wanted to because you heard a news article and just go about your day without playing Metal Gear Solid. I've got to say that like MGS3 is clearly the best one. And that is on PS now. Sure. I like the I... first one the best, but that's just because of um, like the gameplay of 3 is better for sure. But I liked the first one the best as far as the like the story song and stuff. Is better. You can't tell me that you don't love that theme song. Uh, it's a good theme song, but it is cheesy as hell, and I love it. Uh, All right. Something well, about the first one. Let's move on past the Metal Gear and Konami being assholes. Um, there is a new old game that is taking over Steam, and I'm not looking at Among Us. I'm looking at Chips. <laughs> uh, chips Challenge goes live for free on Steam. Tom, yep. this is your wheelhouse. Hit yeah. it. I don't even know what this is. What is All this? Right. How how the fuck did you guys? Do you guys not have computers? No, I, I had didn't. three. I had three one. I never. That was not on my PC. Okay, it, so now it wasn't included with three one, right? It's it's a game that was made in that era, but it was not included okay. with Windows. Chips okay, Challenge. Okay. Chips Challenge is like one of the most classic PC games of all fucking time. Um, and it is now on Steam. It is now free on Steam. Because uh, there, there's a sequel made by the OG dev. The, the guy that made Chips Challenge 1 made a sequel that he's now selling. And uh, that's, that's fucking heartwarming. I love Chips Challenge. I played the fuck out of it back in the day. And yeah, I'm reminiscing about a literally 30 year old game. Uh, but if you're looking for something like a little grid based walk around puzzler, push blocks and get keys to unlock doors sort of game, it's good. It's really fucking good. It's got a whole shit ton of levels, a whole shit ton of content. And I can't say enough good about Chips Challenge. It is legit. And what else is legit? is our lack of knowledge because none of us besides you know anything about this game. Oh my so God, how do you guys not know about chips challenge. If windows 98 doesn't know about fucking chips challenge, I'm going to have an aneurysm out here. Talking to you, AOL instant messenger Wait, slash so windows 98. What version of windows did this come out on? Three one. I don't think era, I, I don't think I ever owned a, or my family didn't have a PC during that era. I don't think we had a PC until like windows 98. And uh, AOL does not had, know about uh, it either. We had what? He doesn't know about Chips fucking challenge. God got, damn it! You I'm guys, watch, I'm out. <laughs> you guys remember uh, Web Web TV? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that that was the first PC we had. <laughs> oh, shit. So I think this is another case of Tom taking his perspective and thinking it's the norm. No, yeah. I'm just gonna call it now. So this hit. I found out about this because this shit hit Hacker News. Like, which is like hacker the, news. The, yeah, everybody's is totally usual source of information. <laughs> hacker news for people in the tech industry is basically Reddit. 
It is it is a very very popular forum slash social news place. Um, no one I've talked to that I've ever worked with goes to that place. Yes, they do. You just don't know it. <laughs> or no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, just maybe. But no, either, either way, the game's free. Um, if you're interested, check it out. It's on Steam. Look it up. Oh my it's God. there. I you, promise. You all are uncultured swine. I swear to fucking God. Scott, I hack for a living and certainly don't go there. So Hacker News is not a security blog. It's not a security place. It's, no, it's no, hacker but, but, in the sense of building things. But that's fine. That just means it's amateur hour out here. The only real guy. Y'all are playing. Tom, Tom, Tom's getting Yeah, I'm his, out here gatekeeping. He's getting his trendy stuff up here, you know. He's gatekeeping. Anyway. Oh, let me go get um, my fedora. And my Model M keyboard sitting I'm right here. I'm the key master. You the and, and we got another tech... As of right now, Tom is the only person, and we have multiple tech people here that knows of the site. Anyway, um, let's carry on. Microsoft made a big fucking acquisition. A really, really big acquisition. They dropped 7.5. This acquisition is useless without the community patches to run it properly. <laughs> well, half of it is. Um, they dropped 7.5 billion, with a B, dollars, to purchase ZeniMax Media. So uh, this gives them Bethesda, id, and game news. That gives them all the Elder Scrolls, Fallouts, Doom, Wolfenstein. This is fucking nasty for first parties in the future. Like, this is huge for them. So what, I mean, what does it I, mean for the general gamer? It means um, that the exclusive deals between Bethesda and Sony um, probably either just got a whole lot more expensive or Microsoft could say, yeah, your next Elder Scrolls is going to be on Xbox and PC. Sorry, PlayStation. They haven't said um, that out like outright right now because the deal is still very fresh. But uh, yeah, that's a possibility. So what's going to probably happen because this has happened with previous acquisitions obsidian entertainment was purchased by microsoft while um the outer wilds was going or outer world sorry um what uh, that's going to happen is publisher deals are already in place for games that are in development so elder scroll 6 will probably be on all all consoles it's just what's going to happen immediately what it probably means you're probably going to start seeing their titles on game pass so you'll prob i would not be shocked to see Doom Eternal on Game Pass in the next three or four months. Well, they, they, well, they teased. Just, they teased it. Yeah, oh, they literally well, there just you go. Xbox really quick, and here in the next few months, it'll hit uh, Game Pass for PC. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I totally read that news article, and I wasn't pulling shit out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they this, this said it. But no, anyway, um, that's going to be the big thing. And then going forward, like, Elder Scrolls 7 will probably be just Microsoft product. It won't be on Sony, which that will be um, huge. Yeah, that I'm less convinced of because even Bethesda said, oh, yeah, no, we truly believe in our games going everywhere. But we all know through acquisitions, you don't really get to make those guarantees anymore. Yeah, they you, you sold your way. right to say that. Yeah, they, they might feel that way, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be that way. And also keep in mind, that's probably 10 years down the line. So we're not I mean, talking anything recent. Yeah. So, I, so what's what's really nice though is that um, that Skyrim is going to be built into all versions of Windows. You're going to have Solitaire, Minesweeper, Skyrim right there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but no, I, I look at this as a really good way to beef up Game Pass. Yeah. Uh, it's just another ace in the hole. Phil Spencer's acknowledged that you don't just wake up and become a dev house and they've realized that they have been really bad at being a dev house. So <laughs> how do you get better? You buy a dev house. And they, they bought a pretty fucking big one. Yeah, I, they, they bought a successful dev house. I, I don't know if they bought a better dev house. There's, there's some quality issues there that I hope get at least somewhat mitigated by Microsoft buying them and giving them time and money to actually, you know, release finished products. Um, not holding my breath that will actually happen, but I can dream. I mean, Microsoft, 
there would have been some shit happen. I don't know because Microsoft had some issues with some of their own stuff as well. But I, I'm really happy about it. And also, kind of side note, there was also my, this wasn't the only acquisition Microsoft was pulling for. Like there were talks with Microsoft and Bungie again about pulling them back. So I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if another hitter, like not this big, but if another studio eventually falls relatively soon. Microsoft just buys Sony out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Naughty Dog is now a Microsoft property. Oh, no. The Last of Us 3 on Xbox Series X. The Last of Us 3 Series Skyrim game. edition. <laughs> but, yeah, big news. Um, what we got? That one we've already done. Semi-official Unreal Tournament 99 gets a patch. Yeah. That's a little, little old, but yay. So, uh, yeah, um, Epic gave, uh, like, the community developed some patches for Unreal Tournament 99. They said, hey, Epic, can we get your blessing to push this out? And they said, sure, dog, whatever. So it's not, like, super official. It's not developed by Epic. But it does mean that, yeah, it, this patch is going to be on official servers and, like, through the official client. Um, it's a community-driven game development to keep old stuff alive. And I fucking love this also there's another news story that i didn't put in here which is more of that um the last stand the uh the big community patch for left for dead 2 is live it is out there um it is uh you know published by valve developed by the community and god i wish i really hope this is the start of a trend like imagine if konami released like the the metal gear solid stuff but they said Hey, community, you want to include your shit here and we'll give you like some pennies every time somebody buys a copy of, of MGS on GOG? Like, that'd be fucking great because then that stuff is built in. You don't have to worry about hacks or mods. You can just buy the fucking game and the community members who are doing the work get some cash. It's not a bunch of cash, but they get something out of it. Um, I really hope this is the start of a larger trend in the industry to uh, you know keep our old games alive through just people who love doing it and yeah, give those people pay it's a good story but i don't think the pay is really going to be much to speak of but no. still cool still really cool now something that's not cool slash is cool as quick as among us two was greenlit it was canceled they've officially called off plans for among us two good news they've said that they're going to put all the effort into building up among us one so yeah i mean it, it's it's news but it's not news because they've officially canceled a sequel but what that means is everything that was going to happen in the sequel is going to get built into well i shouldn't say everything they're going to improve the first game they've already said they're going to be making a new level which is cool because they need it um yeah the game's on fucking fire props to them i'd never looked this up so i don't know if it's official i heard it's like a three-man dev house i have no so, idea so um so either way, clearly it is a small operation, but props to them. And yeah, sequels canceled because the first one lives on. It's always cool to see such a small development comp or company or, you know, one developer or whatever, put this game out that just explodes in popularity. Like Stardew good, good for those guys. Like I'm happy yeah, for those Stardew. guys. Stardew is legitimately a single man operation. Yeah. It's fucking insane. He, but, he tried to hire some people. Didn't go very well because he literally listed qualifications and responsibilities as an entire IT department slash dev house slash marketing place slash sales. Uh, it's like, yeah, well, you can expect to make like, I don't know, a little bit above minimum wage. And <laughs> we're like, wait a minute. That's like seven jobs and you're offering what for pay? Fuck that shit. Um, I haven't heard of any news uh, since then. Hopefully nobody took that job because that sounds like hell. Love the yeah. dev. He did a great job, but you you don't you, you can't make a job posting like that, especially after being as successful as you are. I think the job posting was probably more of a troll job. Hopefully, no, no, it was one hundred percent legit. Like he was fighting back on Twitter saying, "But I do this stuff today." Yeah, you're you're a single man dev house like. That doesn't mean that everybody else is going to willingly sign up to do that job. You, you can't offer McDonald's wages and, and expect your level of output. 
<laughs> oh, and Dobby calls out um, I don't know, the witness. Was that a single man job? I thought no. that was an actual dev studio. Yeah. yeah. So he had a team to help him. Blow, yeah, yeah. Jonathan Blow, like it's a small independent studio, but it's it is still a studio. John Blow runs that shit, but uh, no, no. Braid, uh, Braid was not one man either. Braid's initial development, like the alpha versions where they asked, you know, does this thing actually work, was just John Blow himself. But like artists and, you know, uh, sound designers and all that stuff was contracted out. Ah, all right. With yeah. that, I think we're done, fellas. You guys got anything else? Uh, no clip did. I, I know this is a couple weeks late. No clip did a cool um, interview with Edmund, the, the guy formerly from Team Meat, uh, the, the brain behind Binding of Isaac. So if you like those types of games, if you like um, that kind of art style and the stuff that that guy's put out, check out the No Clip documentary on YouTube. It's free. Um, and yeah, it's nice. I like Edmund. He's cool. He seems yeah. like a cool dude. I'll definitely be giving him a watch. Sure I like. Um, Adam. Anything for you? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. All right. In that case, it's rundown time. Yes. So, for all of you um, on Twitch, thank you. Um, but we also have a YouTube. We've been putting a lot more content over there. All our small clips. You don't have to watch the entire podcast. Our entire podcast, in case you actually do want to see it. As well as stuff like Quick Hits. So, um, get on over there. We have a lot more content. It's almost daily, like through the week, every day, there's something new. So check it out. If you're over there watching our podcast, thank you. But we are live on Twitch every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can jump in, get in the chat, get some comments in here, and you can also snipe our lobbies and play the game with us. Also, we have a Twitter, uh, 72PC underscore official. In there, you see all of our tournament updates. We tweet out our plays of the day from all our community highlights and stuff like that. So it's a good way to keep in touch with us. Another great way to keep in touch with us is go to our Discord. Our links are on all of our socials. So you go to our Discord. There's all sorts of games, all sorts of cool people. Just relax. Find someone to play something niche with you. It'll work. It'll be there. It's all fun. Niche? Niche. Fuck you guys. Niche. Um, but that was a lot of shit. If you don't remember it all, just remember 72pinconnector.com. Go there. Links you everywhere. And with that, fellas, that's all I have. I think that's all everybody has. Ah, okay. Shall we? We shall. We shall. Till next week. Until next week. Game on. Game on.